Welcome to Set Your Sights on Business Success. As an adult learner, you have a myriad of life experiences. And during this webinar, I'm going to ask you to curb your cynicism and the need to be right or have everything figured out. What I'd like you to do is recognize that you are not expected to believe anything that I say. What I'd like you to do, if you feel so inclined, is to try my suggestions. And if they give voice to one of your inner desires, take action. And then I'd like you to kindly write me a testimonial if you've experienced growth, expansion, transformation. I'm really eager to see the magic and the miracles that we can possibly create together. So my name is Kadena Tate, and my superpower is creative vision. My passion is teaching female service-oriented professionals so that means like you're an association executive, an author, a writer, a coach, a consultant, speaker, trainer, et cetera, how to take who you are and what you know and package that into multiple offerings. And what I do is I create tools and experiences that you need so that you can be more abundant and successful in getting your work out into the world. That's my passion. Today's agenda is to quench your thirst for knowledge and answers about how to create money with ease as an entrepreneur. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you my creating money framework. And then the second thing that I want you to know is as a result of having that information, you'll be able to walk away with clarity around the power of sovereignty and creative self-expression and the role that they actually will play in your business. Now, one of the things that I believe mind, body, spirit, and soul is that you know exactly what you need to grow. You simply have to ask for the support that you need. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. So here's the framework. Now there's five components that we're going to explore during our time together. The foundation are your core values. Then we move up to your signature offer. And this is about what are you devoted to creating in the world? And then the next level, number three, is connection. This is your content strategy. This is how you're going to use your words to expand paradigms of possibility, you know, to open hearts and expand minds. Then we're going to look at the conversation. That's really your marketing strategy. What's the conversation that you're having with your ideal client to let them know that you see them, you hear them, you have empathy and compassion, and you're willing to support them when they're ready. And then finally, sales. Sales is really about collaboration and co-creation, okay? So let's begin with the core values. One of the things that I'd like to do before um, we begin is let me share a, a very quick story. So I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I was raised in a military household. And I'll never forget three things that my parents told me to remember when I was growing up. The first is service before self. A true leader always works in the highest interest of all parties involved. The second thing is excellence in thought, word, and deed. Walk your talk and talk your walk. The third thing is integrity. Do the right thing even when no one is watching. And these three principles still influence every area of my life and work today. So when we begin to look at the foundation of the Creating Money framework, it's going to be our core values. And as an entrepreneurial leader, I believe that you are invited to create a world where people are safe, secure, and they can enjoy a sense of love and belonging. 
I believe that you have a purpose and I believe that your words and actions hold power. You have within you the power to change another person's life. You have the power to impact the thoughts of another. You have the power to make a difference in the world one word at a time. And it all begins with you. So I really want you to clarify the value of how you're going to show up in the world and what you're willing to contribute. Because being an entrepreneur, of course, is all about service, right? So we look at this list of core values. It's really not about, you know, saying the words. It's about embodiment. You know, we should not have to tell people that these are our values. They should know it by the way that we're showing up. So what's the easiest way to co accomplish this if you're not clear on what your values are? Or if you want the people that you work and serve to know what they are, write down the three values that you honor and represent daily and give yourself permission to ask the questions that go beyond the bottom line. So it might be like, is this in tune with my values? Will this action, decision, project, is it going to make me a happier, wiser person? Is this situation going to allow me to show up in my highest truth? and bring all of myself to the table? And does it feel good? Because if it doesn't, then you've got to get clear about who you are, what you stand for. And what I can tell you like, is um, something to consider. You literally can draw an imaginary line in the sand and make a decision, this is who I am. And once you make that decision, then live that decision. Now, I'm not talking about judgments and criticisms against other people. I'm not talking about religious or uh, moral dictates that you believe in how other people should live. I'm talking about how you're going to show up in the world. In other words, is your organization, if you say, for example, that you believe in vision, does that mean that when people bring new ideas to you and how you can do something easier, faster, better, that you're open to those ideas? So it's not just about the words. Like I said before, it's about the embodiment of those words, okay? Going on, let's look at creation. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I don't believe in competition. I believe that you can position yourself in such a way that you're in a category all by yourself. And that's what I strive to do every damn day. So doing what you love and having the money follow only works if you have a system. That's what I found. And so your signature product, service, program, and approach is going to be the tool that gives you the ability, if you will, to leapfrog the market and make the idea of competition irrelevant. So by you taking the time to create a signature process, that's going to give birth to change and transformation to really what we're looking for are mutually beneficial endeavors. Okay. So how do we do this? I would say that the best thing to do is kind of start with recognizing that your signature offer really involves three main components. It's your dream customers, the results or benefits for those dream customers, as well as how you position your offering in the marketplace. So let's start with the ideal client, your dream customer. What I can um, say to you is that, you know, it's going to take some time to understand your customer in every way possible. It's a long-term relationship, but really taking the time to tweak your buyer persona, get really clear about, you know, who you'd like to work with, that's going to help you market your business in a way that gains their attention. And when you demonstrate that you understand and empathize with them, they're going to be more willing and open to listen to what you have to say. So please take the time to strengthen your ideal buyer client profile. Take the time to really get to know people. You know, ask questions. What are you curious about? 
You know, what are your, what are you concerned about? What are you challenged with? What's keeping you up at night? You know, what are your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations? Really build deep relationships with people. Together we are stronger. And when we begin to look at the results and how we position ourselves, that takes shape in two forms. So it's first is the distinct network advantage. You've no doubt heard a million times, business growth and career advancement is as much about who you know as what you know. And that's exactly why being a powerful networker is important. Now, I'm an introvert. And so I've had to find amazingly simple ways to do this without spinning into depletion, exhaustion, and overwhelm. And when you begin to look at your network information advantage, this is really about recognizing there's some tools that you can use, like speed to market. How quickly can you bring your ideas to market? Take, for example, some of these larger companies who put a product out there. They, you know, the clients give their opinions, you know, they fill out surveys, and then they tweak it and perfect it. You can do the same thing. Also, be constantly in that state of experimentation and market research. Really look for expertise that will foster higher quality when it comes to your production and the efficiency of your work. I also think it's important for you to hone your negotiation skills. I remember years ago, a friend of mine made a decision that she was going to stop. She had been a nurse for 15 years and she decided to go to law school. And she said that one of the biggest lessons that she learned, you know, going to law school was how to look at all sides of a situation. And that made her a stronger negotiator. And so what I can tell you is that whether you're, you know, um, whether you're thinking from a strategic or a technical place, you can really give birth to change and transformation, not only in your life, but in the lives of your clients. Because here, here's what I know for sure. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Okay, it will definitely bring you to meet yourself fully. Okay, let's continue. What I love about this slide and what I love about business is that it gives us an opportunity to really, you know, exercise our creativity. And so what I'd like you to consider is creating a system and a process that naturally models the optimum next best step for your ideal client. And so if you infuse and design a multimedia experience, you know, you're really going to help people embody their own sacred wisdom. And also it's going to make you feel good because you get to be fully and creatively self-expressed. Now, one of the things that I can say to you is that you can create micro content like LinkedIn articles, slide decks, social media posts. You can take beautiful photographs, create checklists and surveys, audio, video. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of what you can do as it relates to micro content. Micro content is about snack size, bite size content. Okay, and then you can also create macro content. This is to take that deeper dive, someone who's really looking for more information because perhaps you're selling a premium product, service, or program offering. And so for that person, they're going to need to see something richer. They might, you might need to have a radio or a TV show and be consistent in the frequency of how you show up. It might be that on your website, you have an interview series or case studies, explainer videos, short films, lesson plans. You know, perhaps you have a digital newspaper, um, print uh, magazine, or you might even have a physical one. But at the end of the day, all of this as it relates to macro content is really going to be showcased for that person 
who needs more information. Keep in mind, when people come on the internet, they're not necessarily coming on the internet to buy. They're coming on the internet for information. And if they see something that's, you know, interesting to them, they might take a deeper dive and look. But at the end of the day, our websites, you know, our social media platforms, all of that is a conversation. So when you begin to look at you know, the mere mention of, of the words sales and marketing, some people spin into full-blown panic attacks and that's not necessary. So what I want you to do is I want you to remember that marketing is simply telling people over and over again what you do and how you can support them. Now, Everything is not about the step-by-step. It's not about the how-to. It's about you sharing with them the transformational benefit. So that means that your marketing materials must speak directly to where the client is on his or her journey. So let me tell you a very quick story. For a really long time, I didn't know what to post on social media. You know, it just felt like it was this endless sea of content creation. And then I started getting really intentional about, you know, eliminating that which is unnecessary, you know, just talking to be talking and really fine tuning and asking, okay, will each post lead them into an understanding for themselves of their own worthiness and enoughness? Because that's the intention of my brand, right? If I'm helping you package your intellectual property for profit, you're going to have to sell yourself because you're, you're, you're the first sale. So if you don't believe in you, it doesn't matter how many tools I give you. So what I want you, I want you to consider that marketing campaigns don't have to be scary. If you look at them as an opportunity to point your readers or your viewers to look within and see their own worthiness and enoughness, you're going to stand out from a myriad of people who do something similar to what you do, okay? Now, to keep things short and simple here, I want you to begin to think about the conversation has to lead them at some point to your website because business revenue is found within your community and within your list. So whether your list is online database or it's offline, you're still old school, you know, you're going to need people's permission to send them marketing materials. Now I'm not talking about spam, I'm talking about sending items of value. So opt-in email marketing, since we're online, is going to be the process of inviting your website visitors to sign up for your email list. And what you can do is you can use a lead magnet or another type of incentive to showcase the benefits of working with you. So it might be an audio, a video, a webinar, a series of, you know, photographs. It might be a workbook or other tutorial At the end of the day, it needs to be something of value. Now, what I also want to remind you is that writing emails does not have to be boring. It doesn't have to be a chore or a burden. So please give yourself permission to use email as a tool to uplift and inspire the people around you, leaving everyone who's on the receiving end of your emails in better condition than where you found them. So let's talk about collaboration. One of the things that I believe is that your sales strategy is really an invitation to liberation and co-creation. You know, people are looking for solutions on how to get things done. They want to live a fuller, richer, and more rewarding life. And so profitability in our businesses, it comes as a result of supporting the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations of our ideal clients. It's about them making an investment in themselves through us. Now, confused buyers, they do not invest. 
So please stay focused on the transformational benefit. What's the result? And what I have found, you know, is that people really kind of invest at the level that's right for them. And more importantly, they invest based upon three things. So the first is the pain that they're experiencing. You know, the second thing is the result that you're offering. And the third thing is their personal money set point. This is how they value different things. Now, some people place absolutely no value whatsoever upon coaching. And as women, you know, we've been socialized to serve others. So take, for example, a woman who's an amazing cook. You know, we've been socialized. You cook, somebody says, hey, can I have that recipe or can you cook this for me? It's highly unlikely that the first words out of your mouth are going to be, that's going to cost you $39.99. But we have no problem whatsoever going into a bakery. And when they say, this cake that you like to purchase is $40, we easily pass over the $40. So what I want you to know is that sometimes people are too close to us and they won't buy like your family and friends because they have access to you. So don't take that personally. Rejection is a gift in that way. But those people can be fabulous cheerleaders for you. Now, let me do a quick sidebar here because some, you know, some tolerations, the things you've been tolerating, it can feel like you're in jail. It, you can be really overwhelming. And so having that sale is about helping to set that person free. Now, what some people choose to do is they choose to take the fear-based approach where they use their words to create inadequacy in, in other people. That is, I don't believe in that. That's not my way. As a guide, not a guru, be your own beloved, be your own guru, okay? My work is designed to usher my ideal clients into feelings of enoughness and worthiness. So I want you to sit in the seat of your personal sovereignty. I want you to rule your world from the inside out because at the end of the day, only you know what's truly best for you, despite the fact that society is constantly trying to tell us something different. Now, if you're feeling invisible online and offline, I completely understand. I completely understand. I've been there and, and at times feel the same way. And so the truth is, one of the things that I've discovered is that you can't start a revolution or a movement if no one knows who you are. So whether your goal is to be seen on TV, heard on the radio, sell more books, secure more speaking engagements, or host sold out global events, I really would like to help you design relevant and proven marketing campaigns that are going to foster authority, influence, visibility, and profitability. And I predominantly work with women who believe that women entrepreneurs are an un or undertapped rather force that rekindle economic expansion. I want to work with women who live with a burning desire to make a positive difference in the lives of others. You want to be a light wherever you go. You know, you recognize that what's good for women is good for the economy. As a mother, a sister, a friend, a daughter, you know, I believe in connection. And I believe that we can build businesses that offer connection and a sense of community. And I personally am committed to creating a business that radiates full abundance, peace, freedom, and equality for all. So what I'm offering you is, you know, an invitation to champion you to the highest and greatest version of yourself. So you can live, what, what do they say? You can live your best life. So I really want you to give yourself permission to create money with ease, to create connections with ease, to live from a heart-centered space, to challenge the ways of thinking that are holding you back, to know that, you know, we honor, or I honor rather, both the sacred and profane without judgment. I believe that you can be healthy, happy, and whole. 
I believe that you can honor the creativity that lives within you and put that out in the world in a beautiful way that not only helps you, but it helps other people. And so let's do a recap. The five components of the Creating Money Framework are your core values. Who are you? What do you believe in? What do you stand for? You know, your signature offer. What are you creating to help people live fuller, richer, and more rewarding lives? And get really, really clear about the actual result of how it's going to affect them emotionally, mentally, financially, spiritually, physically. Then begin to look at connection. How can you use your words to expand paradigms of possibility, to give people hope and inspiration? How can you write the words that let them know, I see you, I hear you, I'm with you, and I can help you get on down the road? The next one is your marketing strategy. Create, you know, this is about a conversation. This is about transparency and vulnerability and connecting with people by creating marketing pieces that meet them where they are. It's not about, you know, us going out and chasing people down. It's about creating an environment where when they see us, they say, I feel like I'm home. This person understands me. You know, and I can't remember um, the exact quote. I think it's Mother Teresa who says, you know, if you can't help my people, don't hurt them. You know, it's, I believe that entrepreneurship is an opportunity for you to heal and be healed. It's also an opportunity for you to express and experience love. And then finally, the collaboration, the sales. You know, this must be mutually beneficial. We don't just take people's money. That's not how we show up in the world, okay? So we want to be in integrity, full-bodied integrity as we do our work. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time and I'm looking forward to working with you. If you feel that this video will benefit another person, please feel free to share it. I really would appreciate it. And um, if you need to reach me, let me pull this up. Here's my contact information. And I just, I look forward to seeing you around the internet. Have a beautiful day.